Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Counting Angles in Degrees Around the Unit Circle. Now, truthfully, this is the kind of lesson that I really wish I had when I first started learning this stuff. Because what's going to happen is right after you learn what an angle is, very, very quickly you're going to be learning something called the unit circle. And the unit circle is a big circle in your textbook or wherever you're learning, and it'll have all the angles written down and all of the, you know, lots of other information, and it's kind of thrown at you, and it's just very overwhelming at first. So what we need to learn how to do is learn what the unit circle really means and learn how to use it. And it is a process that takes a little while. It's not something you can look at and just, oh, I got it, unit circle. If you think you got it right away, you probably don't. Okay, so what I want to do is teach you what the unit circle is, kind of an introduction here, and also teach you how to count, uh, count in degrees to go around the unit circle. Because we're going to start learning how to do all of these things in degrees because we all kind of have a good idea of what degrees are. 360 degrees in a, in a circle, right? But very soon, we're going to switch over to radian measures. Radian is a different way to measure angles, but in terms of pi, basically. And I don't want to get into the details of radians yet, but it's much more uh, difficult to understand because we don't have a good grasp of radian measure in everyday life. So what we're going to do is learn how to walk around this unit circle in degrees first, and so you understand exactly what it means, and then we'll do uh, sine and cosine and tangent and all of that, and then we'll come back to the unit circle and we'll talk about radians. This idea of counting, what I call counting in degrees around the unit circle, is not something you will see in most textbooks, but I personally find it to be one of the most important things you can learn because it will impact every single problem that we do from here on out. All right, so we're going to be counting. We're going to be learning how to count here. And also, I would say one last thing. I want you to stick with me to the very end of this lesson because it's easy to think you got it, but I really want you to practice with me because it will become so critical that you understand what we're doing here. So uh, in general, this is what we have, uh, what we call a unit circle over here, right? It's got, uh, it's a circle, obviously, and you have a crisscross, uh, an X and Y axis here, the black lines, and then we have all of these angled lines, right? So we're going to be getting very, very up close and personal with this unit circle idea. So we have to kind of start with the basics, all right? So what we want to do is talk about what does it mean to have a unit circle? What is a unit circle anyway? All it means, it's a circle with a radius of one. That's all it means. And you might say, well, one what? One centimeter? One meter? One yard? One light year? What? Okay, honestly, it doesn't matter what unit you're talking about. You could consider this thing to be one you know, foot if you want to, one meter, one centimeter. It doesn't matter. For now, just consider it to be a radius of one. So the distance from the center to the edge, all of these distances here, is just a length of one. It doesn't matter what units you work in. So if it's convenient for you, you can think of it in terms of meters or whatever. Just think of it as a radius of one. All right, now this uh, is a circle. So it starts at zero degrees over here. And in fact, that's the very first thing we're gonna write is that we have over here, this black line right here is zero degrees. This is the zero degree line right here. Now we said that positive angle measure goes around in this direction, counterclockwise, right? And we said negative angle measure starts from the x-axis and it goes around like this. So we can label a couple of additional things on this unit circle. We can label this uh, black line here is what I'm labeling here. This is the x-axis. And then this uh, vertical black line right here, we can call this, uh, I'm going to put it way up at the top, y-axis, because I'll probably put some other numbers and markings around the circle as we go. So this is just an x-y axis. That's it. This other stuff is stuck on top of it. So here is positive x values, negative x values, Here's positive y values, here's negative y values. It's just an xy axis. All we have done is put a circle that has a radius of one. That means the distance from here to here along the x-axis is just one. One what? Okay, call it one meter if you want to. Call it one foot, call it one centimeter. I don't care, it doesn't matter, but it's a distance of one. This is the distance of one, so in the y direction, one unit. This is negative, uh, negative one in the x direction, and down here will be negative one in the y direction. So it's just an xy grid. Now we obviously have a bunch of angled lines here, right here, and the way this is uh, laid out is right here, from here to here is 90 degree angle. You all know that because it's a right angle, so this is a 90 degree angle. And then from here to here is another 90 degrees, and then from here down to here is another 90 degrees, and then from here over here is another 90 degrees. So if you know that from here to here is 90 degrees, then this line is cutting this angle in half. 
So this angle is 45 degrees. And we're going to label all of this in a second. But these diagonal lines like this, this is 45. And then this one is a distance here from here to here of 45. The distance from here to here is 45. And the distance from here to here is 45. And then so you have the, the entire thing broken up into segments of 45 degrees. And you might say, okay, well, if this is 45 degrees, what is this angle? One right here. Well, this is a 30 degree angle. And then that would mean this is a 30 degree angle. And then this is another 30 degrees and another 30 degrees. And then the last thing is this angle here, since you know this one is 30, and this one is, is a 30 more degrees, this is a 60 degree angle. And then from here to here is another 60 degree angle. So I haven't written anything down yet, but I just want to talk you through it. The unit circle in general is going to have all these diagonal lines and it gets overwhelming. All you need to know is that these black lines are increments of 90 degrees, and then you have 45 degree angles that are cutting those in half, and then you also have 30 degree angles and 60 degree angles, which are also marked on the unit circle all the way around. Now the 30 degree angles, and the 60 degree angles, and the 45 degree angles, and the 90 degree angles, those are the very most important angles we learn in trigonometry. I mean, we can put any angle into a calculator and get a number, and we'll be doing that, but when we're doing a unit circle and doing things manually, it's going to be 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, or some other multiple. That's why we go all the way around the unit circle like that. So now we need to start with the easiest thing possible. We want to count in degrees. We want to count in 90 degree increments. 90 degree increments. What do I mean by that? I want you to ignore the gray lines. Ignore these gray lines. Ignore these gray lines and ignore these gray lines. Focus on the black lines, right? If this is zero degrees and if this one is a right angle to that, then what must this angle measure be from here going up like this? That means that this angle measure must be a 90 degrees. So as you walk around the unit circle, the angle measure from here to here is a 90 degree angle measure, all right? Now, if this is 90 degree angle, then what must this angle be over here? Because this is another 90 degrees over here. So if this is zero and this is 90, and this is, what's the next thing? 90 plus 90. This thing has to be 180 degrees. And that makes sense because if zero is over here, then all the way on the other side from geometry, you know this has to be 180 degrees away. Now, again, if we have another 90 degree angle down like this, what must this angle down at the bottom as measured from the x-axis all the way around? What must this angle be? Well, it would be this plus another 90 degrees. So what this angle measure is, is 270 degrees. These are numbers that you're going to have to remember. Okay, And if you take from 270 degrees and you walk another 90 degrees, because this is another 90 degree angle, 270 plus 90, what do you get? You get to 360 degrees degrees. So notice the way I'm writing this. The zero degree angle is written right above. That's telling you that if I start at zero, then that's where I start. And as I walk around, I do one entire circle of 360 degrees. I get back to where I start from. And the angle that I end, end on is a positive 360 degrees. That's exactly what you would expect. When you go one circumference, one circle around, you always go 360 and you get back to where you started from. All right. So, so far we just kind of wrote the angle measures down here on the, on the unit circle, but we didn't do any counting yet. And that's really what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk, and you might say, this is trivial. Okay, that's cool. But when we get to more complicated angles and radians, this is going to be very, very helpful. So what we want to do is count by 90 degrees. And what I mean by that is I want to count in increments of 90 degrees. Count in increments of 90 degrees. All right, and what I mean by that is this angle measure from here to here, this is a 90 degree angle. So think about the 90 degree angle as being a quantity of something. It's a slice of the circle. I want to count around that circle in chunks of 90 degrees, in increments of 90 degrees, in units of 90 degrees. I want you to think of this 90 degree wedge of a circle as a thing. It's an object. It's a solid pie shape wedge and we're going to now count by increments of 90 degrees. So this is a 90 degree increment and we're going to count around the unit circle. So let's say what happens if we start at zero. Then the first angle we have is zero, but then we go and increment by one times 90 degrees. 
okay? One times 90 degrees. And we're counting by 90 degree increments. So if we increment again, then we'll increment another time. So it'd be two times 90 degrees to get to the next location. So again, this is zero. This is one chunk of 90 degrees. This is two chunks of 90 degrees. This is three chunks of 90 degrees. And this is four chunks of 90 degrees. The numbers are all here. But I don't want you to think of those numbers now. I want you to think about this being an increment of 90, another increment of 90, another increment of 90, another increment of 90. I can keep going and saying, here's one increment, two increments, three increments, four increments of 90, five increments of 90, six increments of 90, seven and eight increments of 90. And I can keep going and going 10, 11, 12, and 13 increments of 90 degrees. So what will I get? One increment of 90, two increments of 90, three increments of 90, I'm going to drop the degree symbol, four increments of 90, and so on. This is four increments of 90 degrees. And what would come next? I mean, obviously, we can continue this game. Let me go down to the next line. We would have five increments of 90, and then six increments of 90, and then I'm going to go all the way around seven increments of 90, and then eight increments of 90. I'm counting by chunks of only 90 degrees. You might say, why is he doing this? Okay, of course we know this. Yes, it's because when we get to radians, it's gonna be so helpful to count in, in chunks of radian measure, right? So then what happens if we, if we count by 90s, what do we get? Then we know that this corresponds to zero, this corresponds to 90, this corresponds to 180 because two times 90 is 180. This corresponds to 270. This corresponds four times nine is 36, so 360. And I'm gonna keep on going, five times nine, this is gonna to correspond to 450. This six times 90 is gonna to correspond to 540 degrees. And then this uh, is gonna to correspond to 630 degrees. And then this is gonna to correspond to 720 degrees. All right, so I have put my little degree symbols here to try to keep it organized, okay? So why am I doing all this stuff? It's because when you first hit the unit circle, a lot of students try to memorize things. They try to memorize how many degrees it is if I go here and there and all that. You don't ever have to do that, okay? What you have to do is recognize that you can count by certain increments of 90. If you want to know what this angle measure in, is down here, just say, one chunk of 90, two chunks of 90, three chunks of 90. Okay, three times 90, that's 270. Four chunks of 90 is 360. Notice that that's what we said here, right? But then we can go to 450 and 540. How do we know that these are the angle measures? Well, that's because if this was four times 90, this is five 90s and then six 90s and then seven 90s and then eight 90s. Eight times nine is 72. So this is this 360 degrees. If you go around again, 360 plus 360, 720 degrees. Okay. Now, if you were to take a look at these larger numbers, you might not recognize these larger angle measures, but if you take the 450 and if you subtract off 360 from that, let me see if I can do it, 360, then what you're going to get is 90 degrees. If you go down here and you subtract off 360 because you're taking a big number minus 360, then what you're going to get is 90. It, I'm sorry, not 90. You're going to get 180. 180. If you take this guy and subtract off 360, then what you're going to get is 270. And if you take this guy and subtract off 360, what you're going to get is 360. So what I'm trying to say is these really large angle measures, if you don't know exactly where there are in the unit circle, like if I look at 630 degrees, I, I don't know off the top of my head, where is it? Is it over here? Is it over? I don't know. So just take those large numbers, back off one revolution of the circle, and then you have 270, and then you immediately know it's here. So really, 630 degrees means it goes all the way around the unit circle, but then all the way another three more chunks of 90 degrees to get down here to 270. So one way that you could uh, look at that is to say, uh, this is one chunk, two chunks, three chunks, four chunks, five chunks, six chunks, seven chunks, eight chunks, and so on, all the way around to wherever you're trying to be. All right, now the same process works with negative angles. I'm not gonna write all of the multiplications on the board for negative angles, but if you start here, you know that positive angles go this way, and you know that negative angles go this way. So this angle measure down here, of course we know it's 270 as measured in the positive direction, but this angle measure here is also equivalently negative 90 degrees, right? And then negative 180 and then negative 270, and then negative 360. So all of these angle measures that have positive angle measures, they also have equivalent negative uh, angle measures as well. 
So what I'm saying is this angle measure of 270 as measured from the positive axis is exactly the same thing as negative 90 degrees because you're going down by negative 90. One chunk of 90 in the negative direction. Two chunks of 90 in the negative direction would be negative 180. This would be negative 270. So negative 270 degrees is exactly the same thing as positive 90. Uh, negative 180 is exactly the same as positive 180. And so instead of memorizing all these things, you need to learn to count. It's literally like learning third grade math again, second grade math when you learn to count. We have to learn to count in degrees. All right, so I think we've exhausted counting in 90 degree chunks. We're not gonna do probably quite as much talking for the next ones, but now that we have the idea, we can certainly talk intelligently about what we're going to do next. So let me pick, uh, try to pick a different color and let's figure out what this angle is. We just talked about it. If this is 90, then what's this? This is 45 degrees. So if this is 45 degrees, it's gonna be right here. That would be the 45 degree angle measure. So now, instead of counting by 90s, let's count in chunks of 45 degrees. So what I wanna do over here is I wanna say we're going to count by chunks of 45 degree measure. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so what do we have here? This pi wedge, this chunk right here, forget about this line, this doesn't exist. Just this chunk from here to here, this whole segment here, this is a 45 degree object. So one chunk of 45 is right here, and then 145 is here, and then two chunks of 45 is here. That would be here. Three chunks of 45 would be here. Four chunks of 45 is here. Five chunks of 45, six 45s, seven 45s, eight 45s. I can keep going. Nine 45s, 10 45s, 11 45s, 12 45s, 13 45s, 14 45s, 15 45s, 16 45s. I can keep going forever, all right? But let's write down a few things. Let's say we count by 45. We're gonna start with zero, and then we're gonna have one chunk of 45. And then we're gonna have two chunks of 45 and then three 45s, and then four 45s, and then five 45s, and then six, whoops, six 45s, and then seven 45s, and then eight 45s. All right, so let's go around that far. What do these correspond to? All right, so then this is gonna to correspond to zero. This is one times 45 is 45 degrees. What is two times 45? It's 90 degrees. What is three times 45? It's going to be 135 degrees. Let me space things out to try to speed, to kind of make them correspond a little better. Four times 45 uh, is going to be 180 degrees. Five times 45 is 225 degrees. Six times 45, 270. Um, and then we're gonna have seven times 45 is 315. And then eight times 45, and you multiply that out, you actually get 360 degrees. Now you see these angle measures, these are the angle measures that exist on the unit circle. Now, of course, I could just I could just write them down and say, hey, remember them. But that's no fun. So what we have is this is 45, and this is two times 45, which is 90. All right. So actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this in red, and we're gonna try to keep everything in the same color. So here we have a 45 degree increment one chunk of 45, two chunks of 45 was 90. Three chunks of 45 we just figured out was 135. So this angle measure, which is 45 from here, is 135. But then four chunks of 45, when you multiply that out, comes out again to 180. Then five chunks of 45, this comes out to 225. And then six chunks of 45 is gonna come out to 270. And then seven chunks of 45 is gonna come out to 315 degrees. And then eight chunks of 45 is gonna come out to 360. Grab a calculator, one times 45, two times 45, three times 45, that's what you're gonna get. Now, in a similar way, I can go in the negative direction. This angle measure is measured as 315 in the positive direction, 315 degrees now. But this angle measure, this location is exactly the same as negative 45 degrees. Negative 45 degrees is the same thing as positive 315. Negative 90 degrees is the same exact thing as this. And negative 135 degrees measured from here, negative 135 is the same as positive 225. 
All right, so you see the symmetry of things. So a lot of students are like, well, should I count positive? Should I count negative? How do I do it? What you really need to know is that these diagonals here that are on the diagonals, those are just increments of 45 degrees. And if you forget that 315 is over here, just remember, you're gonna have to remember some of these numbers. You know, this is 270, 45 more is gonna be here. Here, 45 more is 360 and so on. And then of course, I can go up. Uh, I went, this was eight times 45, then nine, then 10, then 11 times 45, 12 times 45, and so on. I can go all the way around and do that. So I can measure my angles like this. All right, so now we have counted by 45 degree chunks and we've counted by 90 degree chunks. Now I want to spend a few minutes talking about counting by 30 degree chunks and then we'll talk about 60 degree chunks. So on this unit circle, this angle measure we already said is a 30 degree angle measure from the axis. So this is a 30 degree chunk. So in your mind, you need to remember that this is a 30 degree chunk. So this angle measure is the same as this angle measure which is the same as this angle measure and is the same as this angle measure. So these are all chunks of 30 degrees as you go around, right? So you could say this is 30 degrees and then another chunk of 30 degrees would be 30 plus 30 is 60 degrees. And then another chunk of 30 degrees would be 90 degrees. And then you can continue walking around, but instead of doing it, doing it on the unit circle over there, let's go over here and say we're going to count by 30 degree chunks. We're gonna count by 30 degree chunks. So we're gonna have one or zero and then one times 30 and then two times 30 and then three times 30 and then four times 30 and then five times 30 and then six times 30, right? Now we have to keep, uh, uh, actually no, we're, we're fine there. So six times three, um, yeah, actually, let's go down here. Let's go down and say seven times 30, eight times 30, whoops, nine times 30. I know this is a little boring, but it's gonna pay off. Pay off. 10 times 30, 11 times 30, and 12 times 30. All right, what do these correspond to in terms of angle measure? You just do the multiplication. So what this is gonna correspond to is zero. This is gonna correspond to 30. This is gonna be 60. This is gonna be three times three is 90. Four times three is 120. Five times three is 150. Six times three is 180. I'm gonna put my little degree symbols here, like this. All right, seven times three is 210. Eight times three is 24. Nine times three is 27. 10 times three is 300. 11 times three is 330. And then here you have 12 times three is 36, so 360. You see what's going on here? We're basically calculating the degree measures as we walk around. All right, so all of these correspond. So here you have zero, then you have 30, 60, 90, and the next one after that is 120 degrees. So this is another 30 degree chunk, which comes out to 120 degrees. And then here you skip over this because this is another 30 degree chunk and it comes out to 150 degrees. And this is another 30 degree chunk. So you add 30, you get 180. Then this is another 30 degree chunk and you get 210. And then this is another 30 degree chunk, right? And then you end up with um, 240, just checking myself here, 240, just add 30 to this. And then add 30 to get this, you get 270. Add 30 to this, you get 300. And then add 30 to get this and you get uh, 330. Add 30 to this and you get 360. So you see, you can count by 45 degree chunks and get all the way back to 360. You can count by 90 degree chunks and get all the way back around to 360. You can count by 30 degree chunks. You have more chunks, but you're still gonna count all the way back around to 360. And the same thing happens in the negative direction. This angle is a positive 330 degrees as measured from the, in the positive direction, but that's exactly the same thing as a negative 30 degree angle. This is exactly the same as a negative 60 degree angle. Uh, and this is a negative 90 degree angle. So count by negative 30, negative 60, negative 90. Negative 90, we already said is the same as positive 270. So we have now labeled essentially everything on the unit circle, but notice we never counted by 60s. So I want to spend a second and I want to count by 60 degree chunks. And actually the work is already done for us. So let's just go ahead and say, we start with zero, one times chunk of 60, two chunks of 60, uh, three chunks of 60. Uh, then we have four chunks of 60. 
then we have five chunks of 60, and then we have six chunks of 60. All right, what do these correspond to? You might have guessed, this corresponds to zero degrees, 60 degrees. Two times six is 12, so 120 degrees. Three times six, 18, so 180 degrees. Four times six, 24, so 240 degrees. Five times six, 30, so 300 degrees. And then six times six, 36, so 360 degrees. So you see when we count by 60 degree chunks, we get zero, 60, 120, 180, and so on. Now think about it in terms of 60 degree chunks. Forget about the 30 degree line, forget about the 45 degree line. This is a chunk of 60 degrees. This is a 60 degree chunk. Another chunk, when you add it to this, is going to be this chunk. It's, you're gonna land over here. So you're counting by 60, 60. Then you land over here, uh, this is 60. Then you land over here on 120. Another 60 degree chunk is down here. You land on 180. So that's the numbers we're getting, 0, 60, 120, 180. You have zero, then 60, then 120, then 180. What's another 60 degree chunk? It's gonna be down here at 240. That's what we get right here. What's another 60 degree chunk here? It's gonna be sweeping through here to 300 and then to 360, 300 then to 360. So again, counting by 60s, 60, then 120, then 180, um, then 240, then 300, then 360. And I can continue on incrementing. I stopped at six times 60, but this would be seven times 60 and then eight times 60 and then nine times 60. This was six times 60. This is seven times 60. This is eight times 60, this is nine times 60, and then I can keep going around. And the negative angles is the same thing. This is a negative angle measure of 60 degrees. So this is negative 60 right here. Negative 60 is exactly the same thing as positive 300. And over here, this would be negative 120 is exactly the same thing as positive 240. So why am I doing all of this? I mean, really, all of it is just multiplication. I mean, nothing we've done is more than arithmetic and, and, and multiplication. Why am I taking the time? Because when we ditch the degree measures, which we're going to do pretty soon, you'll no longer have the comfort of the experience of knowing, oh, that's about 90 degrees. Oh, that's about uh, 270 degrees. Because we don't have a good numbers in our mind when it comes to radian measure, which is coming very soon. So in radian measure, it's gonna be critical that you count around the unit circle in the proper increments of the radian measure to figure out what angle you're on. So I'm showing you that by counting by 30s, counting by 60s, counting by 45s, counting by 90s, you can land on any part of this unit circle in the positive direction or in the negative direction and figure out what quadrant you're in and where you're at. Because later on, when we learn about sine and cosine, it's critical for you to know what quadrant you're in. It's extremely important to know that I'm somewhere over here in this quadrant at 315 degrees, or that I'm over here in this quadrant at 210, and that's 30 degrees from, from the x-axis over here. It's important for you to know where you're at and how many degrees you are away from the different axes. So we're gonna solve some problems in the next lesson uh, on, on counting around the unit circle and getting a lot more practice with it. For now, I want you to kind of watch this a couple of times and make sure you understand what I'm saying. And then also try to commit to memory these numbers around the outside. Uh, it sometimes gets confusing and you sometimes forget, but try to remember, I know we can all remember the first quadrant, but in the second quadrant, 120, 135, 150, 180, 210, that these are the important numbers in degrees because it's gonna be numbers that we'll be using over and over and over again. Follow me on to the next lesson once you understand the concept here, and then we're going to crack the, crack the very important topic of what is the actual meaning of sine and cosine. Forget about equations, what is the meaning of it? We wanna understand what it is so that we can calculate things and understand what we're doing. So follow me on the next lesson, and we will conquer that right now.